Welcome at the Fraunhofer Ives Dynamic Nacelle Testing Laboratory in Bremerhaven. I'm happy to discuss today uh, the topic of Nacelle testing with Steffen Sörensen, Technical Advisor of Fraunhofer Ives, and Mr. Martin Pilas, Group Manager for Nacelle testing at Fraunhofer. Mr. Sörensen, which trend do you see in the OEM's approach to Nacelle testing? Well, I think if I were to put uh, one word to it, I would say uh, scientific. Uh, that things are becoming more scientific. Uh, if we go back, uh, say, 10, 15 years ago, um, if you did uh, full-scale testing, it would typically be a highly accelerated lifetime or maybe a calibrated lifetime test. And uh, you really learned a lot from these uh, relatively uh, straightforward and simple tests, just overloading the parts and seeing where is the weak, weak point in the structure. And uh, I mean, what I'm seeing now is that uh, the industry is approaching it in a more scientific way, uh, meaning that um, you look much more on uh, what are the specific problem areas, uh, where have you seen an issue in the field, um, where have you uh, experienced that there perhaps is problems, and then uh, based on that you establish what are the specific uh, hypotheses for these uh, problem areas. And then you establish a test program that directly aims at verifying these specific risk areas. Uh, so from, um, from starting out with something where you go really broad with just high loads and look for weak points, then you scientifically look at where is your concern areas, where have your hypothesis of failure. You set forth a, a, a test sequence that specifically targets that, you execute your test in order to verify whether this is a problem or not. And that basically encompasses the scientific method and that, that's what, what we see industries doing more and what we certainly also want to help them doing. Um, Mr. Peters, what can your clients expect uh, as benefit from a Nacelle test? Well, in general, at Fraunhofer Evis, we are dealing with the complete range of uh, the wind turbines, starting from the support structures to grid integration. And furthermore, we are focused on the validation by means of testing, uh, starting from the material level going up to the full-scale uh, nacelle testing. For example, at the moment, we are uh, executing different projects inside the dynamic nacelle testing laboratory in Bremerhaven, um, on the one hand, we are um, executing a test on a main shaft of a wind turbine. Uh, there we are doing a strength verification by means of a test. Um, there we test six main shafts until a certain damage. And on the other side, so this was the component level, but on the other uh, side we, we are executing a um, um, test campaign for a multi-megawatt wind turbine um, helping our customer to bring this prototype into the field. So in any comparable project we can assist our customer by um, starting with, uh, for example, with uh, defining the test strategy for um, a topic, then helping to develop a certain test setup. This uh, can um, go up to developing a certain test rig then executing the test and, of course, the post-processing of the test data. So these are mostly the benefits that we uh, bring to the, our customers. Do you think it's possible to substitute component tests by means of a cell testing? No, I, I don't think so. I think it's, uh, it's two different test methodologies that uh, you need to see as uh, supplements uh, for each other. Um, in a test rig like where we're standing here today, there you can do a full uh, functional test, a complete hardware in the loop testing. And there's a lot of things that you can learn from that and certain things that you can, uh, you can uh, really dig into there uh, performance-wise. Uh, however, there are also things that you cannot address here. I mean, there are certain things where you sort of look at uh, the variation in product performance or the variation in the structural strength of, of certain parts. And um, this uh, will not be able to get out of, uh, of uh, full-scale testing because it simply becomes too expensive. We need to look at, at the smaller structures. Mr. Pilas, what does the test strategy for nacelle testing comprise? What are the ingredients? Oh, that's uh, not an easy question because uh, there does not exist a one and only test strategy for every wind turbine. 
it's uh, very dependent on the, of the type of turbine, the um, purpose of the customer, if he wants to go more to electrical test or to mechanical test. Then of course uh, it depends if, um, if it's a prototype test or if it's a serial um, production turbine that is uh, going to be tested in the DynaLab and of course of the um, available time on the test brick. Um, these are all um, things that influence the t test strategy, but in general we can summarize um, tests into three phases. The first phase is a kind of commissioning phase. So in this phase we uh, bring the complete system um, in a kind of normal operation status. This starts um, with uh, commissioning um, the different subsystems of the cell, like lubrication system, cooling systems, as well as the power electronics. And then we have to assemble all the uh, sensors for, for the test campaign. And once we have a kind of uh, normal operation status, we can go to real testing. Um, this is the second phase, the functional test phase. In this phase, we um, execute different tests on the turbine. Uh, with a focus on um, validation or system verification. Um, this might be um, model, uh, a, a simulation model uh, verification, or just uh, the normal operational behavior of, uh, of such a system. Um, these two phases are quite um, um, quite useful for any type of uh, turbine and the third phase, the kind of robustness system, is uh, dependent on the customer's needs. So this uh, would stress the uh, uh, specimen by means of electrical or mechanical loads. Um, anyhow, um, we adjust every test strategy to the customer's needs and um, um, a good test strategy can just be uh, developed together with the customer and eventually as well with the uh, supplier of the different components. Mr. Sörensen, nowadays uh, nacelle testing is not the common procedure in the industry. Do you think that one day it might become mandatory as we have seen it with uh, rotor blade testing? I don't think so, uh, but sometimes you should be careful not to predict things in the future. But, but I think um, that the full-scale testing uh, has a lot to do with the, the risk evaluation, uh, the OEM's uh, evaluation of their internal risks, but also the, the customer's uh, perceived risk of the product. Uh, and I think that, that that's really going to drive it. And I think that um, if you look at the two megawatt turbines uh, from old established manufacturers, there is a very well-known track record and well-known performance of these products. And uh, for such products, I think that, that full-scale testing is, is not really relevant uh, in relation to the risk evaluation. Um, on the other hand, if you have a very new big turbine, uh, or you have a new, uh, say, gearbox concept uh, put onto an old uh, turbine, then suddenly you, you're not fully aware of the risk level. Um, you're not fully aware of what can go wrong in this uh, specific product. And for, for such product, I, I think that, that, uh, that full-scale testing uh, is, is the only way to go forward. Uh, but I don't think it will become mandatory, no. Thank you both for sharing your opinions. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.